Good afternoon, Pastor David. It is. Welcome everybody to a random moment with Pastor David Unfiltered. Today, Pastor, as uh, I've shared with uh, with our church audience, and want to welcome those who are joining us here this afternoon. You know, on Tuesdays, I like to kind of keep it current events. Some topics may seem political. They're really not in nature. Just getting your feedback on certain things with headlines that I, I try to stay current with. And then Thursdays, we look at more of the uh, Christian principles and application in our lives. And so being that it's Tuesday today, I wanted to ask you a question regarding our presidency. Uh, the question just point blank. Do you believe our president has lost control of our country? <laughs> I don't believe that um, that the president is uh, is leading us properly. I believe very, very deeply. And again, seeing that we're just discussing uh, opinions, you know, I'm not giving any any um, pronouncement from Mount Sinai for sure. <laughs> but if the question is, do I do I think that President Biden is adequately leading the country and engendering a confidence in his leadership, I would say that he has lost popularity steadily over the last several months to the point where he's, uh, in terms of polls that are taken concerning the confidence that Americans have in his leadership and decisions and all, I would say that um, if the polls are accurate, that he, that he has some of the least uh, approval ratings that we've seen in uh, in many years. Uh, President Biden has has lost the confidence of quite a number, including uh, his own Democratic Party, and so has he has he maintained a level of of uh, behavior and decisions that have made Americans comfortable and hopeful? No, he has not. I, I don't know if our president is actually in control even of himself, let alone of this country. I, I actually have a um, compassion on him because I have a strong impression, John, that that he has diminished mental uh, faculties. I really do. I, I, I have ministered to and have been close to uh, those who have lost their memory over time. My mother had a, uh, you know, had dementia and uh, very slowly over the course of her last year, you know, couldn't remember her own children and all. I, I, I have seen it firsthand. I, have seen those whom I love uh, dearly, whom I've known very well, go through um, the loss of memory slowly over time. And I'm no doctor, God knows that, but I see similarities in the way he looks at the camera, the way he fumbles his words, the way he forgets where he is or what he's doing. So I have compassion on him. So from that aspect, I, I believe that his behavior and his obvious mental uh, weaknesses and his frailty that his body, you can see when he walks, that he has a particular walk that doctors will say seem to, to reveal certain conditions, physical and mental conditions that he has. I've heard doctors who have who've gone on record saying that. So he isn't he isn't causing people to have confidence in him. I don't have confidence in him for the decisions he's made from from leaving Americans behind in you know in danger and abandoning them the way that he did in in opening up the border and allowing people who have uh, have COVID who have not been inoculated and just sending them to various states by at night where people don't even know they're being put on planes or buses and then shipped to different places. 
you know, the the lack of strength that he 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 evidences by not cracking down on on this amazing crime that's taking place in in various cities. The lack of confidence his own uh, party has concerning him. I'm I don't believe that in general people have a sense of confidence in him his leadership and i most certainly don't myself and as a as a pastor as you mentioned you know we we have to keep him in prayer uh, as a pastor what, what do you say to the the church in a time where confidence has been lost in our in our in our nation's leadership uh in terms of where do we turn to and because obviously we can't turn to our our government for what we can only find in Christ. Exactly. But what would you say to the church pastor for uh, in times and such as these where we see it all around us? And, and as you mentioned, you know, there's Putin saying all kinds of crazy stuff. You know, it just, there's this loss, like there's this feeling of, there's a lot, a lack of trust in leadership. Oh, absolutely. Well, there is a lack of trust in leadership. I mean, if my son did what Biden's son did, if my son had, uh, had, uh, the kinds of clear evidence that he's taken money, he's he's getting half a million dollars for paintings when he has no uh, credibility and they're selling his paintings anonymously so nobody knows who's purchasing. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's too much that, that if you watch the news at all that you're aware of. So no, the, the erosion of confidence in, in, in the president, it should awaken uh, Americans especially should awaken Christians to realize that that you don't put your hope or trust in in a government or governmental system you don't put your hope and trust in in an elected official that you think is going to lead us into the promised land you have to be aware of the fact that um, that we have one king and he's the ruler of the universe and so we give him our full confidence and then do what is the proper thing in terms of us being American citizens. Mm -hmm. We vote, we vote our conscience, we, we in, invite others to do the same. And, uh, you know, we exercise the rights that God has given to us, God-given rights that are guaranteed in our constitution. We do those kinds of things. Our ultimate hope though is gonna be in, in God, in, in God, lifting up one and putting down another even as nebuchadnezzar said it's god who determines who the king's going to be right. he's the one who gives the power and the authority and so what we do is we do our best to submit to it you see one of the problems i see in the church today is we have angry pastors creating angry congregations we're mad at the politicians and we forget that uh, that these whom we are now proclaiming to be enemies are in fact those that are our mission field. We're, we're supposed to be praying for them. We're supposed to be praying that God will, will bring people into their life that can influence them for the good, that, that God will save their souls. I'm not saying that's easy. It isn't, especially when you see the injustice and you see the unrighteousness and how it's getting, apparently um, it's becoming common, you know, in our entertainment, in, in the music, in, in in our government, it's it's just spreading. But Americans are 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 forgetting that 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 God can God can save, mm -hmm. God can God can forgive, God can heal. And I I don't want to be speaking evil of our rulers. You know, I don't I don't I don't believe. Well, Titus chapter three tells us not to. I, I don't I don't I don't want to be the pastor that stirs up people to march but I don't stir up people to serve Christ mm. and to love their neighbor and to pray for those who have despitefully used them and, and to trust the Lord to do what is right. I don't wanna be that pastor because there are, there are quite a number of angry pastors right now who, who seem to be stirring their congregations up into in a militancy, you know, we're, we'll show them, show them what? <laughs> You know, what I'm supposed to show them is the love of God and the grace of God. And, and I'm supposed to have an answer concerning the hope that lies within me. And it pertains not to elected officials alone, but it pertains to where are you going to spend eternity? You know, I know there are people right now, perhaps you, they may have already turned me off. 
<laughs> but there are people who, oh, I disagree so much. The church has to stand up and, and look at what we were like in 1776 and this and that. This isn't 1776. And we may have a mythological belief that there was some kind of incredible godliness, but then we're forgetting that there had to be two great awakenings in the United mm -hmm. States because apparently this, um, this Christian nation had uh, fallen asleep at the wheel more than once. And that's why we need revival. That's why we need awakening. That's why we need pastors who thunder with righteousness, not just political persuasion, John. Amen. You know, I, I, I as a pastor have strong political opinions. Anybody who knows me knows, you know, my political affiliation and the things I believe because my, my morals come out of scripture. And had I not been saved, I'd be a, a complete liberal. I was before. Why wouldn't I be now? That's what I was, a, a complete, dedicated liberal. You know, legalize everything, you know. Why not, why not get drunk when you want to? Why not smoke pot when you want to? Why not drop drugs when you want to? Why not sleep with whoever you want to? That was me. I got saved. When I got saved, I started reading Scripture. Scripture changed my mind. I was transformed by the renewing of my mind, mm -hmm. the way Scripture says. So... Now I'm the enemy of those who present uh, their liberal agenda as being the right and true way to live. Well, but I'm not going to swing over to this side over here where I say, you know what we got to do? We'll elect righteous officials, you know. They're, they're, once you get into the, the, the mud of political influence, it's very hard to clean yourself from it. Yes. It really is. It clings to you. So the hunger for power and the power I might gain by being an advisor or a political person or whatever, it's a very dangerous place to be because we can lose sight of what matters. And so I, I you know me, anybody who's watching who goes to our church knows that, that I, I don't mince words as it pertains to living for the Lord and doing the right thing. But I really think that when you're talking about talking to me about whether I think the president has lost any uh, good influence, I, I would say he's lost 70% of it, mm -hmm. almost 70% of it, because the polls are saying that. And his vice president has lost even more credibility. I mean, I could go on, but that's the answer. <laughs> well, thank you, Pastor. And, and it's a good reminder for us to wake up. And it's a good reminder for us to keep our eyes on Jesus mm -hmm. and to uh, and to find churches that preach that teach and preach God's word, not filled with smoke and mirrors and, and ruffling and just getting people pumped up. It's about righteousness and living for God. Living for Jesus, loving your neighbor and telling them the truth. And that's what a Christian does. And we vote our conscience. We influence others to do the same. We have the right to vote. Let us vote. Amen. Run for an office if you feel called. Go, you know, run for the school board if you feel called. A mayor, you know, rep a representative. <laughs> Perhaps uh, run for Congress, run for Senate, whatever. What, if God puts that on your heart, do it. And if you love the Lord and, and uh, your brothers and sisters in the Lord have confidence in you, perhaps the Lord will allow that you would be elected and be a good influence. Amen. You know, it's, I think it's what we're supposed to do. But I don't put my hope in a righteous president, you know, because there's none righteous, no, not one. You, you uh, say from the pulpit, sometimes you'll say, I don't, I don't have a president, I have a king. I have a king. And uh, that's what we need to live for, is that we do have a king, mm -hmm. a king who's superior than anything. Amen. So, you know, we have an exciting week coming up, Pastor. Uh, tomorrow night's Wednesday or Wednesday evening services as you're taking us through the book of uh, Titus, right? Just we're closed tomorrow. We're closed. And we're having communion. Communion. What a great way to go into the Christmas Amen. time with having communion with the church family. Invite your friends and family to come on out, church family, at 7 p.m. on Wednesday. And then uh, Christmas Eve, we have service on Christmas Eve at 7 yep. p.m. Yep. And then Christmas morning at 9. Yep. What a great way to invite friends and family to come on out and join Amen. us to worship the Lord and to celebrate. Uh, I think, Pastor, it's a good time to put all that stuff aside and just come focus on the Lord during this time. Amen. The real season, the true season, reason, the for, reason this season, for this season. The season. reason for this season. So, Pastor David, thank you so much. Church family, thank you for tuning in with us. 
Uh, we say God bless you, and we look forward to seeing you this week. Amen. Thank you, Pastor David.